And so the barber chair probably spins too then. Yeah, it does. You put your feet on it. And yeah. You, you go around in circles like this. And, and everything on this gun side actually works. In the east, Japan fights on. Her Imperial Navy is all but ruined. Her armies are destroyed or cut off on isolated islands. Her air forces are crippled by the loss of her experienced pilots. Japan's dream of empire is shattered, but her military leaders refuse to surrender. This is it. This is the B-29, the plane you've been waiting for. And it was worth waiting for. It's the biggest, fastest, mightiest heavy bomber in the world. It can travel farther and higher than anything else on wings. It has a pressurized cabin, permitting high altitude flight without oxygen masks. It has five remotely controlled, electrically driven turrets, each carrying twin 50s, with a 20 millimeter cannon added to the turret in the tail. Yes, the B-29 is everything you've been promised. And the pilot who flies one has an enviable job. Important, glamorous, and tough. A peachy from World War II, and it's because of this gentleman right, right here. This is <laughs> Captain Robert Haver. He's from Pueblo, Colorado. Yeah. Now, the rest of these gentlemen were his crew. They all did 35 missions together. They all came home. Well, that's the most important thing the, an officer can do. The, the actual Peachy aircraft did not. She okay. was shot down on a firebombing raid in May of 1945 over Tokyo. That crew did not survive. Oh. But again, 35 missions, these guys all came home. Ralph Descard came through about four and a half, five years ago as one of the last two surviving members. He has since passed. But he said how all these guys elected his sister, June Peachy Haver, <laughs> okay? In this case here, we actually have the outfit she wore, oh, that's including so the gun. great. So we honor all our World War II veterans with this. I love it. From this bulkhead, which is the pressure bulkhead mm -hmm. forward, this is how Peachy actually looked. So this is Peachy's numbers, uh, serial number, yeah. everything, okay? But the actual bureau number, this was actually owned by the Navy. Okay. And was used in World War II uh, for training and what have you. Nice. It was saved from being a uh, gunnery target by Fred Weisbrod. So I'm gonna turn you over to Dick. Sure. As Allied leaders prepared for a massive invasion of Japan's home islands, military leaders in Japan swore to fight to the very last man, woman, and child. In late July, United States President Harry Truman and British Prime Minister Winston Churchill made a fateful decision, one that they hoped would end the war as soon as possible and save both the Allies and the Japanese from the bloodbath of an invasion. At the time, it was the largest and most sophisticated aircraft ever flown. With its large bomb load and very long range, the B-29 was designed and built for just one purpose, to strike at the very heart of Imperial Japan. I love nose art and people were probably asking questions like well you're a woman and here's a woman being depicted scantily clad you know what who cares people are going to war people are going to fight they might not come back and if this is what cheers them up and makes them happy and willing to do their mission then let it be the b-25 mitchell is a big strapping bomber 67 feet across the wings but it could reach japan only if it took off from an aircraft carrier the Super Fortress, wingspan 141 feet, longer than the Wright's first flight through the air at Kitty Hawk. Range, altitude, and bomb load, secret. Huge engines and immense size and range, B-29 was, in its day, one of the most complicated pieces of movable machinery ever manufactured. Oh, so wow, look at this. So. 
when you walked in here and you said there's lots of headroom, there's not. Yeah. Because the little round circle on the floor here. Yes. And the little round circle above my head. Yes. Those are the turrets. Oh my gosh. And that's how far up the lower turret came and how far down. They so you basically it. had this space right here to climb through. No, you didn't. Oh. That, that was too narrow. Oh my gosh. So you want to round this way. So who's sitting where in this? Is this? Okay, by their rules. Mm -hmm. Bombardier, who sits directly ahead of the pilot and co-pilot. Navigator, who is some distance behind the pilot, facing forward. Flight engineer, who is directly behind the co-pilot, facing aft. Radio operator, who sits across from the navigator and faces the right wall. Gun commander, who is in the top of the fuselage amidships and can face in any direction. Left gunner, who faces aft. Right gunner, who also faces aft. And the tail gunner, who stays close to the putt-putt during takeoff and landing. His combat position, of course, is in the tail. Checklist, checklist. Everything is checklist in the military. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I love it. One of our docents out here at the museum was a bombardier in the 509th. Really? Uh-huh. Wow, that's and amazing. And he and I used to have many conversations about his time really? in the 509th. Feel very free to step on that seat and then lift the back up. Oh my gosh. Now, can you imagine uh, 14 hours there? No. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you would be like, I totally shooting the shit with these two guys the whole time. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> oh my gosh. This is a B-29A. Okay. And there are B-29s. Mm -hmm. And Martin Omaha, Bell Atlanta, and Boeing Wichita built B-29s. Okay. Boeing Seattle slash Renton built B-29As. And they are four totally different airplanes. Really? does more than just fly well. It packs a terrific wallop. A wallop enemy fighters will quickly learn to fear. That turret you see moving is only one of the five on the ship, which mounts a total of ten machine guns and one cannon. Four of the turrets, two on top and two beneath the fuselage, can turn through 360 degrees in azimuth, 90 degrees in elevation. The tail turret is more restricted in movement, but it has a 20 millimeter cannon in addition to the twin 50s the others carry. But the big thing about the 29's armament is the fact that the gunners don't touch the guns. The guns are controlled remotely from special sites, and any gunner can fire almost any turret. For example, one side gunner might have control of two turrets, firing four caliber 50s at his target. Yeah, it does. You put your feet on it. And yeah. You, you go around in circles like this. And... Oh, that's amazing. That is super cool. And everything on this gun sight actually works. And it looks original. 
It was a piece of crap when I got it. Yeah, it looks... At precisely 8.15 and 17 seconds, bombardier Tom Farabee released a single five-ton object from the aircraft's bomb bay. Freed of its heavy load, the B-29 surged upward. The object, known to its builders as the Little Boy, erupted in an unimaginable burst of heat and light. A single weapon with the power of 13 to 18,000 tons of high-explosive TNT. In the tail, Gunner Bob Carrot winced in pain and tore off the special goggles issued to the crew. Of all the Enola Gay's crew, Karen had the best view of the blast. To the rest of the crew, he described a roiling, fiery mushroom-shaped cloud that boiled up 30, 40, 50,000 feet. This is amazing. This is a great experience. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for your time and I'm thankful to do this. This is an amazing experience to be able to sit in this, uh, in this seat and think of all the men who sat in the seat and really did this. And this is a real living piece of history.